Hey guys, this is Marcy Business back with another video for you today. Today this is going to be a how-to video on how to make your home own homemade ballistics gel from store-bought Knox gelatin unflavored. Um, as you can see here, I've got all the torn up packets um, and I've taken the packets this is what the box looks like. This is what you need. It's the 32 envelopes, the 8 ounces. Um, and here it is. Here's all the gelatin right here. Powdered, all leveled out. And you're also going to need uh, 2 quarts of water. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a pan. And we'll put our 2 quarts of water in. So I've got a pan right here, like that. I'm going to go ahead and get two quarts of water. You want cold water, by the way, cold water. It's two quarts for every eight ounces. So if you're getting two of these, it's going to be a, be a gallon of water. Be a gallon of water for uh, 16 ounces of powder. Got uh, two quarts of water. Kind of wipe that up. The stove is not on. I'm just using it right here. So we've got our two quarts of water, and uh, now the trick is to be able to stir this water. This is going to be really bad because I have to adjust the tripod and set it here on the counter. Hopefully y'all can see that well. All right. Okay. Sorry about all the adjusting. But uh, okay, we're gonna take a. Uh, no, I'm not gonna use that. No. I'll use this. We have a uh, soup ladle right here, but I'm gonna use the uh, handle. And again, this is cold water. Two quarts of cold water. And you want to pour this in here without getting air in there. You want to dissolve these without getting air. Try not to get air in the gelatin. So, uh, should look like thick grits. This stuff stinks. You want to limit the amount of air you get in here. And you don't want any big chunks. You want to get it nice and smooth. You want to just dissolve this. And I'll come back once it's dissolved. Okay, so now that we've started, we've started to uh, get the... Uh, there's really no air bubbles in here. And I've got it to the consistency of thick grits, as they call it in the instructions. Um, you want to try to make sure that there's no clumps of powder uh, that you can see. It kind of looks like applesauce. And this shit stinks. It smells like, uh, like, I don't know if you've ever had an animal go to the bathroom in the house or not, but in it just, that odor lingers. That's exactly what it smells like. And it smells awful. So I'm just going to keep stirring it until uh, I get all of the clumps and stuff at least out of the... Uh, I don't feel like breaking them up, so I'll just stir them out, pick them out. But, uh, okay, I've got my air bubbles limited. And now, for two hours... This is gonna set in the fridge, and it's known as the blooming period. Um, and then after two hours, we'll set the gelatin over a pan of water, make a double boiler, and heat it until it's melted. It's 11.05 now, so we'll take it out at 11.12, 105. 
in the fridge it goes. Okay, so I lost track of time a little bit. It's 1.14. I was watching a YouTube video, um, and I lost track of time. So uh, on my stove, I have this section. It's called a warming zone. And over here, I have it on high just to hurry up and get this uh, to melt. This is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to melt it. Um, if you guys can see, I mean, it's not going... Not going nowhere. <laughs> so uh, put this on here, and you let it melt down. And once it melts down, you uh, over right here. I have a, a jug of uh, cooking oil because I don't have any pan spray. So, but uh, and then I have these country crock. And I have these country crock uh, containers right here that I rinsed out. And this is what I will be pouring the ballistic gel into, and I'll have two molds. Um, and I will coat the uh, take a paper towel. I got my oil right here. I'm all right here. I'll just take the paper towel right here, dip the paper towel in the oil. What you do is you just run it around the container. That way your molds pop out really easy. And again, you aren't using you are uh, not again, but you aren't going to be using these for human consumption. So uh, don't worry about how much oil. Just as long as you don't put it too much to where they won't allow it to uh, reset. So, uh, okay, I've done, I've done a line that one with oil. So now I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna line this one with oil. Here, and I'm just rubbing it around. If you've ever made a cake, you've had to do this before. Line the pan. And you just, with Crisco or something. They say to use Pam cooking spray. Um, for this, but uh, I don't have any, and I'm not gonna spend like five bucks on pan cooking spray when I have cooking oil. Okay, so after you do that, you throw it away, just rinse your hand off, get all the oil off your hand. Um, of course, wipe your hands and get your bowls away from the uh, pot stove now because they are plastic. So, uh, I don't know how. It's only a warming zone. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and I'm gonna use a uh, burner on medium heat. Now you do not want to scorch this. Um, so that's why I'm using low heat. But uh, I may have to, um, I may have to use, end up uh, doing something else to uh, make it soften. Uh, it says to take a pot and put water in it, bring that water to a boil and uh, once you bring that water to a boil set this pan in top of that one and uh, it will slowly melt this but uh... yeah it feels really weird guys I mean it it's an awkward feeling and if you've ever had a baby's diaper uh, explode like once it got wet or something that's exactly what this stuff looks like um, so yeah. And like I said previously, uh, this stuff freaking stinks, man. It, it reeks. So, uh, once this stuff gets melted and, uh, down to liquefied, I'll come back and see now that it's partially, uh, it's melted, but, uh, they're still solidified. So, uh. Again, I'll come back when it's uh, completely melted. Alright, so uh, the gelatin is completely liquefied now. I wound up doing it this method because I really didn't want to take the chance on messing it up. Um, that would make me really mad. So uh, all I did was take this large pot right here. I filled it with water. Or I took this large pot, set this pot inside of it, and then I filled it with water until it came up to about halfway on this pot. And then after I did that, I... Um, I just sat here and I kind of just 
stirred it a little bit at a time until uh, the gelatin it all finally melted. Um, and again, you don't want to get any air bubbles or anything in here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have my butter bowls that are lined, and uh, all you're going to do is you're going to pour this medium into these bowl into your plastic containers or plastic container. You don't have to split it between two. You can do it on one. Uh, just go ahead and pour your medium in there. And uh, I'm going to do that. And okay. So now that I have my gelatin uh, poured into each of these containers, and I have them poured about uh, even. Uh, this one might be a little bit more than the other, but uh, either way. Uh, now you're going to let both of these sit for at least 24 hours, but 36 hours is recommended. Um, I've done all this in one day. It's a all-day kind of process. Start in the morning or in the afternoon. And then you can let you let these sit for 24 hours. Uh, 36 hours is recommended. Excuse me, like I said, um, I probably uh, will put lids on mine after it cools down for a little bit, only because uh, I don't want uh, someone to just mess with it or anything to get in it. Uh, so. Uh, that's basically it guys, uh, once it's dry and uh, done, after 36 hours or 24, whichever, um, I will come back and I will show you what it looks like, but for now. Alright guys, so it's been 36 hours now, um, I'm not in the kitchen, I'm going to be doing this from my room, the last part of this. Um, so here we go now, this has been 36 hours in the fridge, actually it's been a little over 48 um, it says 36 on the directions, but I was told 48, so uh, I just let it sit in there for two days straight. So, uh, remember I had put oil around the edges of the bowls, so, uh, I'm just squeezing it back and forth like that. There you go. One, two, three, just that simple. Again, I'm just, that's why I'm using these kinds of bowls, so I can flex them. There we go, just like that. Uh, jello <laughs> so uh, anyways guys this is what your end result should look like unless you made it in a different container then it should look like the shape of that container but um look forward to uh, some penetration tests with this anyways this was just a how to on make how to make your own ballistics gel and I thought I'd share my first time doing it as a how to for you guys so uh, I really hope this helped you and I hope you guys uh, take this up for yourself and if you do decide to do this, please leave it as a video response to this video. I'd be more than happy to see uh, your progress on this. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I appreciate all the support. Later, guys.